Welcome to the Maximo Application Suite video series brought to you by Maven Asset Management. This demonstration will continue our discussion of Maximo Manage result sets and will build on the report object structure that we previously created and previously granted security access to. And now we're going to take that report object structure and build a result set, a result set that will show for our users on the Maximo Start Center. All right, great. So now we're signed in to Maximo Manage 8 as a business analyst, and we want to bring all the work that we've done together, the work in creating our report object structure for a result set and granting security access. So as the business analyst, I've added a result set portlet here on my start center to give us a jump ahead on this. But now what I want to do is edit it. So I'm going to click on my edit pencil. And a couple of things that will immediately display and let's talk through is my portlet type is a result set. That's right. But now that have the display name, what the end users are seeing, let's make this so they know exactly what they're looking at. So they're going to be looking at open work orders with inspections. And you can see I had typed it in previously. So I'm going to pull that in there. Perfect. What's my application? My application in this case is WOTRAC. Now remember again, the main table of the application that you select must equal the parent table of the report object structure you created. When I bring in my WOTRAC application, Maximo automatically populates a default report object structure. There is no clear definition to Maximo what that default report object structure is. So for example, there is not a flag for you to set in the object structure app. It just brings in one of the object structures and it shows you the parent and all the child objects associated to it. Well, as we had stated, this wasn't the one I wanted because I want to bring in some inspections information. There's no inspections here. So let's click on the lookup and now let's see that new one that we added our work order demo report object structure. And as soon as I select that, my object list refreshes, my parent is the same, but now my child objects are different. And not only do I have the option to select fields from work order details, there's 170 some available to me, but now I can also select fields from asset and inspection form. And the fields that I show in asset inspection form are the ones that I said were available to be included in that object structure application. Before I build this content, let's go up here and make sure that we have our query selected. In my case, I'm going to bring in my open inspection work query. What does that mean? It's all my work orders that have a status of approved and whopper and in progress and waiting for material, etc., that also have inspections associated to them. But now let's start to build, okay? What do we want? What fields do we want to our users to see? Well, some of the fields I might be very familiar with. So for example, Wonum, let's grab him. And I have to go to the action menu to bring in that field in Maximo 8, maybe I bring in my work type, you know, is it an EM work order? Is it CM, PM? I always love to bring in priority fields so I make sure that I'm working on the right thing. And let's go ahead and add that. But now let's add our asset information. I want to bring in my asset num. But now maybe I might not be as familiar with my asset num and I want to bring in my description. Well, if I look at my description, I'm on work order details. I don't necessarily want my work order details description. I want the description from asset. So watch what happens when we add our asset description here. It brings it in. You can see down below asset description. And now I can see how that is, this field is coming from the child object. Each one of these field names comes from work order, but again, asset description is coming in from wo underscore asset. That's the relationship that brought those fields together or available from asset into work order. That's perfect. I really want that information, but maybe there's some other information from asset that I want. 
in the environment I'm working with, you can see I, there's a number of attributes that have AH in front of these. These are available from Asset Health because that's an, uh, available in the environment I'm working with. I'm just going to keep scrolling so you can get familiar with all the information that's really available to you. But I'm going to take some of these. I'm going to get my expected life in years, my expected life date. Let's grab failure class. Those look really great. Um, can I add those? Perfect. And again, look how it starts to build. Work order asset so I can see exactly where each one is coming from. Well, I'm going to back up here to uh, work order details. Let's grab inspection, see what kind of information I have. I'm not I'm necessarily as concerned about the inspector as the inspection form. Let me grab that. Perfect. And again, I'm going to do the same thing with inspection form, and I'm going to grab my description. And I'm going to add that. And I think there's a type. I think I want to grab that too. Nice. So I've got quite a few fields here. I've probably got a little bit too many. I'm actually going to um, delete my failure code here just so I can show you everything on one page. It's a little bit easier to consume. Okay. Um, and my numeric um, numbers are just missed up here. I lost my number eight. I'll just put that on there. Refresh these so it makes it easier for everyone to see. Definitely easier when you see 10 to 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Awesome. So here's the 10 attributes that we have. That looks really, really good. But now the other thing I want to do is I, I really like to um, show my chart by default. I just think it's it's so much more um, gl gravitating, if that's the right word. And I'm going to save that. I should save that as I move along, and I'm going to finish it. So I have a little bit different chart, so I'm not going to show you that exactly. Let's take a look at this, what we've done here. My open work orders by with inspections. Um, I'm looking at by work order priority. So I can see my priority one work orders have 17 of them have inspection forms associated to them. Here's my twos. I've got quite a few work orders, 86 that have inspection forms, but don't have a work order priority. That's super interesting. But now here I can see that I looked at it slightly different. I was looking at it by asset expected life in years. Well, can I change it? Sure. Super easy to do. See if I have that same field. Yep, I think this is it. Let's click OK. Wow, perfect. So again, it's so easy to change to get to that value that is really meaningful to you and also that your users can quickly consume. Um, I could also look at it by inspection form. That might be really interesting. Oh, wow, look at this. If I look at my result set now, my open work orders that have inspections, over 80 of them are using inspection form 1002. That must be a super popular inspection form. So really interesting and, and really powerful way to look at this information. If this isn't the way you want to look at it, if you want to look at the traditional list view, that's also available to you. In this case, because there are so many fields, um, you might not have them all displayed and you may have to move your toolbar on the bottom. But one way to do um, to get around with that is you simply download it to Excel. Oops. And um, it just disappeared because I don't have my Excel op option open. But basically, that will open up your result sets in Excel so you can take a look at it. And then you can also you know, navigate through all the various information. I personally love the chart view. I just think it's so powerful. I mean, look at this. This is pretty much the exact same information. And I can see how different um, the, the information is displayed at me. For this case, again, I'm looking at my asset life in years. So for my assets that are expected to, um, I have to you know, decommission them very, very soon. Assets one and two over here, that's, these assets are going to be decommissioned within the next couple of years. They really don't have a look, lot of work orders with inspections versus this guy over here. Um, oh, 
expected life in year. Wow, 42 years, that's a long time. Or no, excuse me, 42 work orders. So super interesting how you can analyze this information. Super easy to set up, really, really powerful. Um, and I hope you explore the features and functionality available with result sets in Maximo. Thank you very much for your time.